What I want to show you is Power BI, which is part of Office 365. And what I'm going to focus on specifically is the Q&A function, which allows you to put plain language questions in. I'm going to look at it in an education context because the challenge for education is how we make the value of the business insights we can produce something that's really compelling. And Q&A is really the point that we can start with because we can start to look at data using natural language. So for example, let me just put into the Power BI box up here. Um, I want to see the, sh uh, the student count uh, for 2012. And what it's going to do is go away and look for the data set that I've got on my documents folder that's set up for Q&A that has got the relevant data in it. So you can see it's selected the university overall statistics data and it's shown me a number um, which is pretty good it doesn't it's quite intelligent in that it knows that uh, 2012 is a year and therefore it's showing me that um, it's not quite intelligent enough to know that humans are pretty much always integers so I've got two decimal places let's uh, let's delete that for 2012 and see what it does with that well now it knows it's dealing with a time series so instead of just showing me a total number of students or a list of the years it's decided to give me uh, a bar chart. So now we're seeing the growth in the number of students. Um, now, what is interesting is if we go by year and say something by citizenship. Um, now, as you can see, it knows that citizenship is there in the table. So it's even though I haven't finished typing it yet, it's uh, it's created the chart. Um, and what we can see here now is it's put it on the same chart. It's separated out domestic students from overseas students. Now there's pretty clearly been a growth in domestic students, but I can't work out if there's a growth in the uh, overseas students. So let's change the way that's being displayed. I want to see it as a line chart. It's gonna redraw it. And then you can see an interesting trend here where the overseas student line first starts to plateau and then starts to drop in the last two years while the domestic students keeps, grow keeps growing. Um, maybe we want to see it a different way. So let's say show student count by year, um, by and university, for example. Now, this is going to give me a chart that doesn't really make much sense. So it's showing me all the, the um, student count and then breaking it down for the different university. That doesn't really help me. So again, let me change that into a line chart. And I'll probably get a much better interpretation of the data. And in fact, um, we've now gone from a set of data to something that is really revealing. Because if you look along here, what happens is in 2004, the number of private universities students starts to increase massively. So by 2012, we've had this huge leap as a result of the Bradley Review in the number of students that are going to private um, providers of higher education. Um, so there's a really good example of something stepping through using plain language queries to actually get to a point where it's interpreting my question, interpreting the right way to show me the data, and then displaying the data for me. Now let's show something else. Um, let's start again. So what I want to do now is compare two bits of data together. So let's compare the student count to the staff count. And again, it knows it's got a time series of data. It assumes I want to see a time series. It's going to do it as a scattergram um, because I'm comparing two sets of data together. So along the bottom, the total number of students, and along the left axis, the number of staff. And what you can see here is between 2001 and 2007, we had a pretty rapid growth in the number of staff. But between 2007 and 2012, the number of staff across universities has been pretty static even though we've seen a huge growth of um, nearly 300,000 students. So um, let's look at that a bit further down. Let's um, look at this by university. And so what we can see here, again, it's decided how to plot this for me. Um, now, it's difficult to see anything in here. So let me just look at one year's worth of data. So now I'm comparing the staff count by the student count for 2012. And if you were to draw a line from the bottom left up to the top right, and say that's your trend line, what it means is the universities that are down here are universities where they have a lower number of staff per 100 students, and up here, a higher number of staff. So uh, let's go back and see if something changed in 2006. And again, 
what we're seeing is, well, we're seeing the data change, but I'm not really sure how it's changing. So in fact, let me go back and find a different way to display this data. What I'm gonna do is take the year and put that on what is called the play axis. And now if I hit play, what you're gonna see is 10 years worth of staff and student uh, data moving through time. And for sure what you see is everyone moving out to the right as they acquire more students. Now, um, if we look at a university down below the curve, so these, these are treating more students per member of staff than uh, others. What you can see is RMIT, pretty static in the number of staff, but a rapid growth in the number of students. And somewhere like University of Adelaide, which has obviously got a different business model, they've had a faster acceleration in the rate of staff over students. Now that leads me straight into another question, which is, okay, it's interesting to see they've got different mo models of uh, staff to students, but does that affect quality? Um, and one of the other data sets that's available is the rate of dropout of students, the attrition factor of students. Um, in Australia, about one in five students drop out of the first year of university, um, but the rate varies greatly across universities. So uh, let's look at that. So let's show the student to staff ratio against the attrition rate uh, by university. So now what we're going to see uh, is all of the universities plotted here, and I'm going to ask to see this for domestic students because I know that the um, attrition rate is different between domestic and international students. And let's look at it for 2011. Really what we're seeing here is the data is all over the place. There's no clear trend. So let's go back five years and look at 2006. And again, the data seems all over the place. There isn't a line of best fit. So just to check that, let's go back to the, use the play axis again to play the year across and let's play the data and see what we get. And pretty much no strong trend emerges out of all of that data. No matter how we move around, people are generally moving, but they're not really kind of fitting to a trend line. So I think this is enough to allow me to look at it and go, well, I can't see a strong relationship between the dropout rate of students and the proportion of students and staff. So, you know, there doesn't seem to be much business impact either way from the decisions that are taken. Now, I'm not here to try and answer all the questions about how universities uh, are managing their, their business, but very quickly, we've gone from a big set of data that isn't available connected uh, together into a set of data that has been connected through Power BI and where we can do visualizations. Um, if I was going to show you just one more thing, I'd probably show you this. Let's look at the student, to start, uh, student count, i.e. the total number of students against the attrition rate. Um, and so it's building it by year for me, but I don't want to look at it it like that. I want to look at it by university. Um, and let's do it for domestic students. And what you see here is a definite trend line going from the top left to the bottom right, which basically means the less students you have, the higher your dropout rate. And let's put that played over time over the last 10 years. And let's go right back to the beginning. And now you can see what happens is the number of students is increasing, but that same trend exists across all of the years, which is these smaller universities have a much higher dropout rate than the larger universities down here. Now, correlation doesn't mean cause. It may be something else to do. These are all fairly regional universities versus um, universities that are based in the state capitals. So there could be lots of reasons, but certainly gives us some a way of being able to go in and look at the data.